Welcome back, everyone. Today is the second episode of Time Out Tech, powered by Coliseum Sport. Today, we will have the special guest of talking with CEO of Playform, Shmulek Borel. Before that, we're going to dive deeper into the evolution of soccer training tech. We're going to also later be talking about the boiler room takes. But before that, Jake, Will, I want to hear your thoughts on soccer training tech, specifically with youth. Yeah, um, I'll kick it off. Um, I don't know, I played soccer as a kid. Like, I loved playing soccer. And the one drill that I always will remember is when a coach takes out, you know, the little, um, they're the orange cones. Oh, the, oh, the cones. cones. Yeah, not like, not the, the big cones, the little ones yeah. that you could, like, kick over. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I will never forget the many goals in the cones. And you go back and forth with the inside or outside of your foot, and then you shoot. Like, that, I wasn't the best dribbler, but I would always use that drill to – make me better and that was like that was in like 2007 2008 i mean now we're in 2021 and this tech is i don't even know like we i saw a kid playing playing uh soccer at, at gordon beach the kid must he had to be like 10 and he was playing with like 30 year olds he was like unbelievable and i, th I really think it's this new technology is i really think it's making kids a lot better than they were before for me growing up I was a soccer goalie. I, I, I was never the fastest. I was never the quickest. So I found myself in goal. But to be honest, I never took soccer playing to the next level. I'm a soccer fan. I'm knowledgeable on the sport. But for me, playing as a goalie at the younger level, one of the biggest issues was as a goalie, one of the, the, the most important training things is obviously practicing saving shots. As you said, if you're a field player, you can practice going in and out of cones, whatever. But if you're a goalie, it's like you need to actually practice saving quality shots. Well, if you're a young player and you're practicing with young players, nine out of the 10 shots are not good shots. Nine out of the 10 shots are rolling right at your feet or the one that is a good shot is an impossible save to make. So you sit there for two hours practicing, diving all around, and you maybe only get 10 or 15 quality chances to actually make a save. Now, with all this technology, every shot might be a perfect opportunity to save it. Every single rep you get can be made perfect so that you really are maximizing what you're doing. And this is what's crazy about it is that like if you think about it for for um, offense and defense, they have the, these new technologies that can make them better. But for the goalie, it's there's really no technology that, I mean, you can get those things that kick the ball at you, but they're really expensive. But what's great for goalies is that it's always going to be the same player, the ball, and the goalie. There's no technology. But however, now goalies are going to get better because the strikers and defenders are getting better. They're shooting at them because of the technology. Right. So even though there's no technology necessarily for goalies, like because of technology and the influence technology has, you really can see it like that. And, and I think that was a part of growing up, having those experiences like the cones, like sitting in goal for two hours. Maybe now, you know, nowadays, there are a lot of kids quitting statistically. We'll talk with Shmulek later mm -hmm. because they feel like it's not fun. And you know, it's really smelling like, like boiler room takes. It's smelling, it's reeking of I think, it. I think so, that's time. And what I think is the essence of youth soccer seems to be moving in a direction not consistent with team traits. Are kids growing up too fast due to the social technological advances within sports? And, you know, are kids losing this, the type of team camaraderie building that they used to because there's all these apps focusing on people perfecting the individuality of their skills. I was talking to Jake earlier. It's like basketball. People are trying to make threes before making free throws. Yeah. How, how are players going to hone That's in on point. the fundamentals if they are just looking at the technical, like just trying to be specialists before being technical good players and good team players? Yeah, one of the things that I want to touch on is that, I mean, yeah, everyone takes private lessons for stuff. You could go to a pitching coach for baseball. You could go to a swing coach for golf. You could go to a shooting coach for basketball but growing up in a really competitive community the one thing that my middle school teacher when I played in middle school and um and stuff he the one thing he stressed was that there's no I in team and I feel like that's a motto that our generation is we we, we, know we need that, it that's ingrained in our minds though that, that there's no I in team and right. now these new kids are so individually based that there's a we and there's no wait what's the term but whatever but they, they don't they don't play by the no I and team anymore. It's just I. But that's what we think. I feel like is that is technology going there? Well, I'm gonna take your your take and spin it a little bit. I actually think 
that people are starting to get away from, from the team game and stuff like that because of how helpful technology is, honestly. You have players, the way it used to be is you have the best player and he just, obviously you can train, you can get as good as you want to be, but honestly, if I'm the best player and not to, not to be mean, you're not the best player, <laughs> it's going to be very hard for you to overtake me. Oh, obviously, it is possible, people improve, but if I'm the best player and you're not the best player and the way team training used to work, the team was not built around the best player, but it was like, you worked as a team to facilitate who were the best players. Like, you watch the best teams now. Portugal, just the other day, got eliminated from the Euros. But they facilitate through Ronaldo because he is the best player. And not that that's selfish, but he is the best player. He receives the most attention. Now, because technology is so helpful and it is so great, you have every single player on the field thinking that they can be the best player. But could that be detrimental if everyone thinks I'm the best? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, I don't think it's them thinking they are the best because in reality, it's the Ronaldos, it's the, in this case, the Mies, yeah. who, who, who really are the best. And, and because of technology, and it's honestly so beneficial, which is what's making it harder. And I think that as we move forward, people will better understand how to use it and platforms like Shmulek, which we'll later talk about with Playform, will help to cater towards that. But yes, training is great. You should put in as much work as you can. But if you're not the best player, no amount of technology training is going to make you the best player. And that honestly, I think, is a bit of a contradictory view to what a lot of people think now. I feel like a lot of people think that if you put the most amount of work in, you can be the best player. And honestly, as I'm saying, and I'm thinking about it, I, I don't know if that's entirely false. But I feel like that's not true for the majority of players. And the issue now is that the majority of players do think that. In soccer, 11 players on the pitch. All 11 players think, oh, if I get these new technologies, I can be the best player. And then the team should be built around me. But it's not like that. The team needs to work as a cohesive unit, but feature the best players. And there's nothing wrong with not being no. the best players. As I said, I was a awful, awful field player. I'm not fast. I'm not agile. I can't. I can't play on a soccer field aside from in goal where I often still struggled. But the point was I kind of accepted my role and did what I could in goal while still improving myself. I, I did everything I could, but I feel like because these soccer technologies are so beneficial, kids like me today would be like, okay, this is my skill set, but if I take all of these technologies, I'll become the Ronaldo and I'll become the field player. And that does honestly work for some people. I'm not if, if you're if you're the me, I'm not telling you to not try it. Because it does work for some people. But the reality is that can't be everyone. Mm -hmm. There has to be the players who are the role players. There has to be the players who are the facilitators. I'm a big NBA fan. Lou Williams is an all-time great. He's a six man. He comes off the bench I almost every game. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think it's important. Were you going to say something? No. I, I mean, I was, but you can go first. I think it's really important for these technologies to be, yes, catered for individuals, but also have an element where they can improve their team building and team bonding ways. That, that's the bottom line. Technology, it's a very fine line. It can be integrated in the sport, but don't let it ruin team building. And, and Jake, what were yeah, you going to say um, about that? The thing is, that, like, I was just going to take one thing that Will said. If you look at the Ronaldos, you look at the Messi's, you look at the LeBrons, yeah, Ronaldo's goal, goals number and Messi's goals number are astronomical. They're huge. But what you don't see is that, yes, you could argue that they're a no eye in team player, but they're also one of the best playmakers this world will ever see. Like, because their goal numbers are so high, you don't get to see their assist numbers. And Messi, Ronaldo, they're two of the best passers ever. Same with LeBron. Yeah, I don't know about Ron Messi. Definitely, Ronaldo. He gets a little selfish. I'm saying like the time. really I mean, most, the most still, selfish like, players aren't. But don't like become... LeBron, LeBron has the second. What is he? The second most points of all time now. But he might have have the most assists of all time. Exactly. He like Westbrook. People would argue he's a selfish player. The, the, the guy's average triple double. That's the most playmaker type stuff ever. Right. So you, I, I mean, and now when you look into like the new players, like if you look at Kalani, Kalani, and Mbappe. If you look at Mbappe, he's a very no eye team player. I don't know if you noticed that. He's always on the sideline doing his moves. Yeah, he passes sometimes, but he doesn't pass as much as a Messi. And that's like where this the next generation is going. And I think that's where Shmulek Barella is going to really help us in this conversation, talking to the CEO of Playform about all these upcoming issues in sports that just weren't a topic five, six years ago. And, and, and real quick, before we do get Shmulek on and get to hear his thoughts, I feel like... 
not an issue, but just something that needs to be highlighted. Just because these are individual training technologies doesn't mean they can't be applied on a team scale. Like you can work yourself using these technologies, but still have a team oriented focus. Like you could be training, oh, how can I get my teammates better involved? How can I see the pitch to make sure that I have a true vision of, oh, where's the best passing lane? Who's making the best run? Oh, who can I lay it off to? Just because you're training by yourself doesn't mean that you can't be improving your ability as a team player. And uh, Playform does exactly that. They have a tab, a team building tab that not enough sports technology companies have because that is what separates sports technology, especially youth soccer technologies, different from everyone else. That's what separates it. Having that team bonding issue. So excited to have Mr. Burrell on and looking forward. Mr. Burrell. Hey, how are you? How are you? Great, great to have you on. Thank you so much. We're very excited. I'm with Andrew. I'm Andrew. I'm with Jake and Will. This is our second episode of Time Out Tech. And we're just going to give you an intro if that's okay. Sure, sure. Okay. We at Time Out Tech are fortunate today to have with us CEO of Playform, Mr. Shmulek Burrell. Before taking the role of CEO for Playform in 2020, Shmulek was CEO of VZelzone and Como. Playform is an AI-powered soccer skills measurement mobile app designed to provide real-time feedback and improve youth soccer players' skills. Shmulek, jumping right into questions. What has been your inspiration as the leader of one of the most successful startups in the world, and where do you see Playform in the future? So, uh, first of all, uh, thank you for having me with you. Uh, so, my inspiration was uh, um, this situation which I found out on the youth outlets market where only a small piece of players have access to their data and playing analytics at their most exciting years of player development. And we all know that uh, data today is the, is the new asset, is the Absolutely. new one, which move industries and make the next revolutions uh, and the next uh, step forward. And what um, I've been, uh, 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 what I saw is that in sports, um, technology are still in a very early stage in the innovation phase. And that's why I think that there is a huge, huge opportunity here to bring these technologies to the mass market. Thank you. And uh, Jake's going to ask you a question. Yeah, Shmulek, thank you for uh, being on our podcast. But um, diving more into like the operation side of Playform, how does on-field um, performance, um, like how does on-field performance get better with the use of Playform? Like what technologies does it use to make players play better? Yeah, so our vision at Playform is to bring an elite level technology uh, into the, the mass market by utilizing the mobile phone of, of players only. So what we have seen and the, uh, is that these top tier clubs, the professional players have access to many of data analytics and technologies. But again, looking at the youth market, uh, youth players don't have access to this. So we uh, scratched our head how we can take this uh, elite level technology and make it available and put it on the fingertips of each and every youth athlete in the world. And we believe that by having the data, uh, know your skills, build your own player card, and understand exactly how you're doing relative to yourself and to others, will make you a better player. So with Playform, we have developed a proprietary technology, computer vision based technology, which allows us to analyze players uh, and ball uh, movements through the mobile camera phone. And by that, we analyze the player performance in real time, give him real time feedback about his performance and allow him to improve himself by offering him a personalized training experience. That's amazing. Um, with like with soccer, you got to be on the field. You got to be outside. So, COVID has like ripped our world apart the past year. And how has Playform been able to adapt during these hard times to still give youth soccer players this next level technology? Yeah. So first of all, our technology doesn't really require you 
to be on field. Uh, you can take many of our drills. Actually, this is what we've been working very uh, 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 hard in the last few months uh, due to COVID-19 to adapt our technology to be able to work everywhere and not only on the field. So um, you can take platform today and even make some drills at home in your backyard, in your street, uh, um, uh, in your neighborhood uh, field, your street field, and of course on a professional field and all will work the same. So you will be able to get your data, your uh, the analysis of your performance, no matter where you are doing, doing your drills. And when you get to the professional field, then you will be able to do the same. You will see that you got improved due to the, uh, due to the using of Playform everywhere. Amazing, thank you. Shmulek, Will here now. I, I just had a follow-up question to go off that. I've heard you talking a lot about how, along with obviously everyone else, a lot of Playform is focused towards the youth. And researching before the episode, we, we were looking into Playform recently joining the Youth Soccer Tech Alliance. So what really about working with the Youth Soccer Tech Alliance excites you? And where do you see the Youth Soccer Tech Alliance and Playform moving towards in the future? Okay, so I'm a, um, a tech guy, so uh, though I really like uh, soccer and very passionate about soccer, my background is from uh, the technology uh, aspects, and as I've mentioned, and as you've mentioned at the beginning of the episode, I have a vast experience in different industries, and uh, what I saw with the sports market is that the sports leaders are overwhelmed with many technologies that they're being offered, but they um, don't have a clear path on how to analyze these technologies. They don't have um, a clear structure of how to pilot technologies in clubs with the players uh, and so forth. And in many, many cases, the players are much more techies than the coaches or the clubs. So the players, they are youth guys, they are, getting, uh, they are used to technology, either uh, by playing games or any other activities that they're doing with their mobile phones or, or PCs or, or whatever. And uh, when you go to the clubs and to the coaches, then you see uh, sometimes that they're, they're left behind. So they cannot catch the technology how the, the, the same in, at the same pace that the youth, their, their own youth players uh, actually do. So. Um, this alliance is a great tool, a great way to be to help uh, the sports leaders to be able to have a clear view of all the technologies in the market, how they can pilot these technologies, to learn from each other. And I believe that uh, the way uh, to get familiar and to get friendly with the technology is first of all not to be afraid from the technology and then to hear others and have a clear way on how you are piloting it in a very easy way. So uh, the, the, the mission of this uh, alliance is really to allow these sports leaders uh, to try and absorb this uh, uh, much more easier and to remove down the, the fears, the, the, the concerns that they have about implementing new technologies on their clubs and, and teams. Definitely. And, and what is it that separates Playform from other AI soccer startups? You know, what, what do you guys do that makes a consumer say, I need to go to Playform? So our focus, our core technology is not the AI, is the computer vision. And there is no other solution on the market uh, which actually has the, that is doing what we are doing. We are analyzing technical and physical skills in real time through the mobile phone only. So it's not only about uh, um, like offering you a great content or a personalized uh, training, but which is based on content. We actually, we're like a digital, we're like a real coach, uh, but our eyes is the technology. And this is a proprietary technology. We've been developing this technology for the last 
three years almost with several um, uh, 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 patents that uh, that uh, were part of this uh, technology and we're allowing each and every youth athletes actually to get uh, the experience of a personal coach but with a mobile phone so it's not only that you get a great AI tool you're getting a computer vision technology which analyze you which watch you really watch what you're doing and provide you tips and provide you real-time feedback of how you're doing, how your body is moving, uh, your skeleton, uh, the, 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 the speed of the ball, uh, and many, many other insights that we are collecting by analyzing you as a player and what you're doing on the field or in the area where you are being, where you are training and providing you this feedback. Um, we, have, we have a great... Uh, a very deep uh, uh, understanding of the market and we didn't find any other solution on the market today that actually that actually actually providing computer vision mobile based technology like playform that's very interesting and and that sounds great it seems like you guys have really found a very notable and important market that that needs to be addressed and then to wrap things up and kind of address something we were talking about earlier in the episode during our boiler room take segment, as you kind of said, one of the issues with, with obviously sports tech in all areas is great, but one of the issues is that it seems like some of the younger generations or some of the younger players don't exactly know what to do with some of this sports tech and something we found and something that it seems like is coming up through a lot of the younger generations is soccer uh, is people have become so prone to to perfecting their individual skills through this training that they've kind of forgot a lot of the team aspect of the game. And and through looking through your website and Playform and everything, I I can easily see that Playform is focused on incorporating the team aspect while also training, but I didn't know if you want to touch up on that. While allowing people to perfect their own skills, how do they also work as a team? Yeah, so um, we have... Uh, we have uh uh, a clear way on how we are going to incorporate these uh, uh, team activities as part of the application, but uh, but at the moment we are still focused on the individual player. Uh, when you are talking with and, and see the reason why youth players are quitting sports, it's mainly because it's not fun anymore. They are not being rewarded, and they don't feel the personalized experience of the training and their improvement when they are part of team sports. So we wanted to bring back the individual, the personalized experience, the fun experience, the rewarding experience uh, when using Playform and take many aspects from the esports, from the gaming experience where players, the young players today are used to have on their on their mobile phones and they are very excited and engaged with the game and bring it into play form and put the individual in the center. So our focus in play form at the moment is the individual player. We know and some of the drills that we are we have on our app are actually drills that are targeted to improve you as a team player, not as right. an individual, but as a team player, but still you are doing it them on your own at the moment. We have uh, on our uh, roadmap later on, we are going to introduce multiple players, uh, drills and others. So it's going to be very, very excited and uh, and uh, and uh, enrich our uh, our capabilities in, in play form. Very exciting. That's Mr. Shmulek Burrell. Thank you so much for ha- for coming on. And it's so exciting. For our listeners, details below on Playform, very, very, very informative. You want your kid to get to that next level? Look at Playform. Look at the way they're integrating sports and technology to make the youth the best player he or she can be. Thank you so much for coming on today, and we really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye. And I also real quick to touch up on what Andrew said for all of our listeners. While Playform is partnered with the Youth Soccer Tech Alliance and is working with a lot of the youth 
it really is for everyone. If you're an older player, if you're an intermediate player, if you're a professional, Playform can help everyone. It's not just for the youth. And, and while they are, that is one of the main areas they're focused, it applies to everyone. So if you're looking to improve your skills, visit the link down below, check out Playform, and get to work. And I thought it was really interesting how he was talking about the, the vast majority of people now quitting because they don't feel like it's fun. And, you know, that's very concerning. And Playform's doing their best to start an initiative where kids can still feel like they're still having that personalized experience. Jake, like, what, what were your thoughts on him? Yeah, um, I was actually about to touch on that, too. I was scrolling through their website this morning when uh, we were getting prepared. And uh, the one thing I noticed is that one of the things that your player card, he just mentioned the player card. When you play like FIFA or you play you play those games, you create, Madden Mobile. You create, you create a my player. You know how you create a my player? Yeah. On Playform, I'm like buzzing about this. It's like so cool. They your your player card is a FIFA card. It's like the same thing that comes out of FIFA, and your stats are on the same base. So it's like, oh my God, my player card and Ronaldo's player card look the same. Like, even though I'm even though we're 20 and 19 year olds, like my inner 12 year old self playing soccer with my dad in my front yard right now is like going nuts. Like, <laughs> I think I think that like if everyone had the opportunity to make a personalized FIFA card yeah. that changes as you get better and it, it plays just like the video games. It's so cool and I feel like now it's like so engaging. It's, it's unbelievable. It's also technical while not being too technical. Like I think he had said you don't need any equipment to do it. You just like need your phone yeah, and a few things. In your house. It's not like you're putting a bunch of things on your body and stuff like that. That's really important so it's not like a, a huge slap to put on and yeah. Even, the, even now sorry to interrupt but like even now like he just he said that it's all it's through the phone camera, like every single person has a phone, and most people's phones have cameras. I mean, it really applies could, to everyone. Anyone could use it, even if you're like 60, 70, just getting into the phones, and you have a grandkid. You could use, they could help you. They could use Playform. It's so marketed to everyone. I think everyone should go look at it. And most people aren't getting a coach for a seven year old that just wants to be playing and being active. That's where you get that personalized experience, which is so important, especially coming back from a pandemic. Ha having having the uh, fact that we talked about the boiler room and having a way where a team where people can still feel like they're in a team and having fun. That's what Playform brings. And exactly. th that was that's what's so exciting about having Shmulek on this episode. Thank you guys and we cannot wait till next episode.